Well, there's, there's no more dangerous side or more confident side than this one because Palace are minus 120 at home to Villa. Uh, Champions League has been sewn up for Villa, so it's plus 275. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to see a Champions League Villa here uh, this weekend. The under over set of 3.25, we've been at minus 120. Mark O'Hare, Palace for me, they're minus 165 to score twice. Villa, I think they score. Both teams are scoring over. The draw is at plus 310, but I can't get in the way of Palace. I mean, I even thought last week, Wolves, Palace, draw. They absolutely tortured Wolves. <laughs> they did. Um, they're in a great uh, run of form right now, and mm. this is probably not the right time for Aston Villa to go there. Uh, I'm sure you may have seen, but in on Tuesday night when Tottenham lost their match against Man City, which confirmed Aston Villa yeah. playing Champions League football. The Villa players and squad and staff were um, enjoying their end-of-season dinner, and the news broke, and you saw pictures of the players, the staff, all celebrating, all getting on it with a, a few beers and drinks mm. to celebrate. Um, and look, there's plenty of time for Villa to recover from a hangover from Tuesday to Sunday afternoon, but um, that's just one of the reasons it suggests to me that perhaps there might be a downing of tools. But the the key point, I think, to oppose Villa this weekend, um, regardless of who they're playing, really, is the fact they have looked out of gas for the most part of the last couple of weeks, really. Those home and away legs against Olympiacos, they have nothing left to give. You can kind of allow them to raise their game against Liverpool for the last home game of the season uh, on a Monday night uh, against big opposition. But going to Palace, uh, especially when you listen to John McGinn talking, um, he spoke after the the game against Liverpool and he said a lot of the players are out on their feet, a lot of the players are playing through injuries um, and he said they've reached their their physical limit really, um, which is understandable considering they've been fighting on a couple of fronts all season. So it's not really the venue you want to end the season on when you're feeling like that, away to Palace who are in fantastic form, five wins from six unbeaten games. You mentioned that game sort of smashing up Wolves at Molyneux last week. They've also annihilated West Ham and Man United, beaten up Newcastle in that sequence too. Uh, the combination of Mateta, Eze and Lise have been pretty mesmeric at times and there's a lot to like about Palace and I think the future looks really bright if they can hold on to those two superstars, playmakers um, for next season. Um, you know, they should be aiming for a top half finish. So, um, yeah, I'm very similar. I'm all over Palace in, in many different ways, but uh, I know you guys have got pro Palace plays, so um, I've gone elsewhere. So my play was here to back Michael Elise to score at any time, a uh, plus 230, which is a very disrespectful price, uh, considering he has scored in nine of 18 league appearances this season. So 50% hit rate, and he has scored in four of his last six at Selhurst Park. Yeah, he's plus 230 to score. Just looks hugely overpriced and quite disrespectful for one of the, the leading lights in this Palace team. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. You've got to be with the home side. I think that, again, this is one of those where, like Chelsea, the season's ending at the wrong time for Palace because I think they're going to be, uh, as long as everyone stays fit and they keep them players um, as well. Before I go to Brad, though, I love, you know, anyone who knows me, I love my banter. I think it's so, so healthy. Oris is giving it to you, Vantage Roxy. Uh, he wants to know what about that profile picture. Come on, son. Don't be getting all shy on us. Um, Oris, keep the uh, banter coming. Brad, Palace Villa. Yeah, I'm going with Palace money line here. Um, I thought the price was more than fine. Aston Villa basically crawled their way into the end of the season and then put up the most massive effort to get back in the match to get that point against Liverpool. Uh, they're banged up. Like we just go through the list of players that are injured. Uh, it's just tough, right? Even having uh, Matty Cash out there when they had him out on the wings, and you could tell that he was not 100% because I was like, I, I said something like, Matty Cash, is he really that slow? Like there's no way he's a pro football player that slow. And then news comes out he has a calf strain. Like there's a lot of banged up players on there who's, who are tired. Aston Villa have only won one match. Um, away from home in their last uh, five across all competitions. Now they can just sit back and relax. And it's not like we're we're just fading Aston Villa versus a bad team. Uh, Chris Palace have to be the most informed informed team that is in the Premier League. And, you know, this is another team who maybe they, they started their season a little bit too late, right? Like they, need, they want more games to kind of climb up the table. Since Glasner's come, uh, Glasner comes over to this team and, and just totally changes things. I was on them a little bit for not shooting enough. Now they're shooting and scoring. Elise is playing great. Eze and Elise combination is great. 
Mateta is now getting talked about going to, uh, my God, who was the team? But I, I was like, the same Mateta who they wanted to bench early in the season, that's the Glasner effect, right? Like he has these guys playing full of confidence, full of belief, and scoring goals. Uh, yeah, they're going to play against the tired Aston Villa side. So money line was, was more than enough for me. And this was another one of those matches where I thought shot props would be good. No, nah, they're not. Prices are terrible, so I just stuck with money line. There's a combination of factors here that have all fallen uh, for Crystal Palace. They've got a new manager. They've now got a fit and healthy young dynamos. They've also got two lads in midfield who look like absolute weldies because all they've got to do is give the balls to the piano players. Walton and Hughes are just absolutely loving life in the midfield because they win the ball, they keep their shape, they give it to them. And by the way, at the back, now all of a sudden all you've got to do is defend. Don't do anything other than defend, which is great, because the worst hit players in the team are always the defenders. Uh, and it's a fact. They're always the last ones to be picked in the playground because they're absolute odd carriers. Um, yeah, uh, Napoli looking to uh, replace Osserman. OK, uh, official picks, please, because we're all involved there. It's uh, Alise, anytime goal scorer, plus 230. Palace and both teams to score. Palace to win and both teams score, plus 225. I've got this game 3-1. Palace money line, uh, minus 120. 